Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Consultant Roundtable for North American Center of Excellence. Uh, my name is Scott Whitney. I am a principal consultant here with the team uh, focusing on manufacturing distribution operations. On the other side of the studio today, we have Clark Haskins, uh, who also is principal consultant uh, in the same discipline. We have a uh, good agenda for you guys today. So I want to first thank you all for sharing the Consultant Roundtables with your team and your colleagues. Uh, if there's someone else that you'd like to be included in the invites, please let us know. Um, we'd be more than happy to, to send the invites to those. Uh, uh, let us know either in the chat box or, or by email. As always, uh, please feel free to add any questions uh, using the, func uh, the question function here in the GoToMeeting block. And just so you know, the recessions are recorded. Okay. So go ahead and get started. So our agenda today, we're going to do a, a preview of uh, the North American preventive maintenance uh, add-on that uh, Clark and the team has done a tremendous job of, of creating and, uh, and testing and implementing here. Uh, so Clark will be giving us an overview on that. We'll go quickly into what's new, uh, more of some just information from us and our team. Do a little bit of uh, Sage University overview for you uh, and your customers. And we'll talk a little bit about the upcoming session. So Clark, let's turn it over to you to preview preventative maintenance. Great, thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. um, good morning, everyone. My name, for those that don't know me, my name's Clark Haskins. As Scott said, I'm with the uh, principal consultant with the North America Center of Excellence. And today on behalf of the entire team, I'm excited to share with you a preview of preventive maintenance. Um, and let's let's start with some background. Next slide, please, Scott. So the purpose of preventive maintenance is to add the basic functionality of CMMS, Computerized Maintenance Management System, to Sage X3. And a CMMS is used to manage maintenance operations within an organization in a more effective way by focusing on preventive maintenance to reduce costly downtime. Now, this would include production and non-production related equipment. A CMMS would allow processing for preventive maintenance, planned maintenance, and breakdowns, of course. Now, a CMMS can also be used to manage regulatory compliance for quality management systems, activities like calibrations and inspections that need to be performed on a scheduled, ba ma sorry, scheduled basis and documented to provide proof of completion. A CMS can also be used, or um, so in simple terms, think of managing your vehicle's maintenance. The same applies to the equipment within a production facility. Preventive maintenance will bring the change oil light to Sage X3. Next slide, please, Scott. So the need for preventive maintenance was brought to us by the pre-sales team based on feedback from uh, prospective customers and then developed, as I mentioned, by the North America Center of Excellence. The objective of preventive maintenance was A, to manage data. The data related to maintenance tasks, maintenance component inventory, maintenance related resources and equipment, and of course the associated costs. The other, another objective is to manage the maintenance job ticket. The job ticket is used to identify maintenance tasks um, that need to be performed by whom and with what components will be required to complete that task. And then of course, we need to capture the cost of the maintenance task, both the planned and actual. The objective, another objective is to plan and schedule maintenance to provide visibility of what maintenance tasks are in process, what maintenance tasks need to be planned, and what, what need to be scheduled. And then next we need triggers to provide visibility of when a task is performed, the change oil light. Reporting requirements, users need the data to be available to report on time spent on maintenance tasks, costs associated with the maintenance task, history of what was performed and when, and of course, capture key indicators such as downtime. Next slide, please, Scott. Our team's focus for preventive maintenance was simplicity. Simplicity in design and development. 
preventive maintenance utilizes standard X3 functionality. The approach that was taken was to apply the processing and preventive maintenance to X3 manufacturing functionality of a work order. Similar, creating a work order, track time and issue components, roll up the costs, and manage component replenishment. We also wanted simplicity for our customers. By utilizing similar functionality to X3 manufacturing, the customer experience is, is simplified for training, for internal cross-training, and by using similar processes like material issue and replenishment tracking and costing. And then next, we want to sim provide simplicity for you, our partner consultants. By utilizing similar functionality, preventive maintenance does not add complication to the implementation of Sage X3. Next slide, Scott. The initial target for preventive maintenance was food and beverage industry within the North American market, as well as a requirement within the discrete um, manufacturing environment. However, when with the design of preventive maintenance, we focused on flexibility as well. Um, there is flexibility in the functions and data and how they can be used. Preventive maintenance provides the ability to configure the solution to meet the needs of our customers. So it's a highly configurable solution. Um, perfect, Scott, can you, ne next slide, please. Let's take a look. How are you? Perfect. And have you got my X3 screen? We see it. Perfect, great, thank you. You're welcome. So as, as I mentioned, the basic flow of preventive maintenance is similar to the manufacturing flow and processing of a work order. If we look across the top here, we see where the, there's a queue to identify maintenance tasks that need to be done. This is done initially with a query. We have the job ticket, think of a work order, job ticket equals a work order. We have job ticket tracking, production tracking. We have job ticket close, and then of course our cost finalization. So let's take a deeper dive. Now a maintenance task is identified by a product. This will be referred to as the maintenance task product. This product is non-stock managed. We, we're not receiving inventory of the maintenance task product through the processing of a maintenance task, right? We're basically, the purpose of this product is to calculate costs, roll up costs from the labor and from the components. The maintenance task product will be the parent product for our component list. The component list is similar to the, the, the production bomb. Um, and then the component list will have components assigned to it. And then the maintenance task you see here, this is similar to the routing and manufacturing. So let's talk about product category. Now it's recommended that a new product category be created for the maintenance task products. Let's just take a quick look. And so from here, So when we're in our maintenance tax prod, maintenance ta maintenance task product category, the key is we see that it's not stock managed. And of course we need to define a unit of measure. Now it's on the account and cost tab where some key changes are made. And that's specifically with the account code. Line 12 in the standard account code, it points to stock and in manufacturing, this would be an inventory account. But for preventive maintenance, we want this to be assigned as a maintenance expense account. This is where all the costs will roll up. And then typically, typically the valuation method would be standard. Um, average cost works as well and our um, standard cost update will be calculated. Now, once our product category is created, 
we're going to create a product record using that maintenance task product category so that the values will default um, into the product and into the product site. For components of a maintenance task, there's no specific requirements for product setup. Components for a maintenance task are typically stock managed and will use standard X3 functionality such as replenishment, stock management, allocation and issue rules, location management, and lot or serial management as required. Whether or not uh, an ex a new product category is required will be based on how the rules may apply, such as allocation rules. In some cases, you'll find that um, inventory for maintenance may be stored in a stores area or a specific location, and the desire would be to only allocate from that location. Within a discrete manufacturing environment, it's possible that you may have inventory of a component both for production and for maintenance. So you've got that ability to manage those two pieces. So once we've got our components created, and again, standard X3 functionality, we would create our component list. And component list, you'll, you'll notice the similarity in screen is, is just like a production bomb. We've got our maintenance task product is used as our, our um, parent product. Um, same details, available management unit as one, which will typically the case, but there may be scenarios where that will be different. So that flexibility was left in. Other pieces or components would be populated, whether that bay, um, our link quantity code could be proportional or of course be fixed. And keep in mind, because we're talking about a maintenance task product, um, the, these products, the components may only be accessed once a year. Think of a pump and there may be requirements when I'm using that pump. So I maybe need to verify the check, the, the, the tag that may be attached to it. So the, the capability of adding text becomes a, a little more important with maintenance tasks um, with, within preventive maintenance, since it's not uh, things that happen all the time, but we still need that information available to us. All right, so I'm just going to back out of here. And so I mentioned the maintenance task. Um, in, in preventive maintenance, this is like a routing and manufacturing, but rather than work centers, equipment and resources are added to the maintenance task. Now, equipment and resources are key pieces of preventive maintenance, so let's go here first. Equipment and resources will identify where the work's to be performed, that's the equipment, by who, the resource, and then of course the planned time to complete the operation of the task, which would be entered onto the maintenance task. Equipment. So what is equipment? Well, in fact, equipment can be anything that needs maintenance, inspection, or both. Equipment can be a work center like a packaging line. Equipment can be a section of a work center like the pelletizer on the packaging line. Or equipment can be something that requires inspection or calibration where proof of inspection is needed. It can be production related or non-production related. Think of a shipping bay door. Um, the question, what is equipment, provides tremendous flexibility for the customer's specific maintenance needs. So there's some key elements that we've got available for the within the equi equipment function. So of course, we begin with an equipment code. We have a site, our description, equipment group, which can be used in many ways to um, group like products, maybe production, non-production, maybe grouping by um, type, hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, et cetera. Tremendous flexibility here for your customer's needs. Could also be utilized to manage um, departments, who's responsible for this equipment. Now the management sections used to store information about the equipment, kind of a single source for the related data. Here in this case, we've got a piece of equipment and that piece of equipment's associated with the work center. We have the capability to assign a parent equipment to this equipment. Think of that palletizer as part of the packaging line or think of a hydraulic pump 
as part of the hydraulic system. Um, model numbers for reference information. Location is the standard X3 location functionality to help identify where that this piece of equipment actually is located. So think of if this were a hydraulic pump, for example, how many different hydraulic pumps may be within a discrete manufacturing environment. We also have serial number um, available for entry, date of service, and equipment status with several options available. Key pieces here, right, is to help manage the warranty in terms of where is this product within the warranty, as well as identify you know, the various um, preventive maintenance pieces that need to be required. And then of course, really important within um, preventive maintenance is the attachment functionality is available and it can be used to store things like user manual, warranty information, tester configuration results, and any related work instructions and procedures. So it provides a great deal of um, flexibility in terms of making this that single source of information for this piece of equipment. Now the history tab that you see here, um, it comes from job ticket tracking and is populated when that job ticket is closed to provide documentation and verification of the steps performed basically identifying the date, the product, which is our maintenance task, the job ticket, the job ticket tracking number, uh, tracking date, the resource that was used for this particular um, maintenance task, as well as the time spent. Now schedule is used to enter any preventive maintenance tasks or inspection tasks that need to be scheduled in future, such as an annual inspection or a task to replace an overhaul. Um, since resources may not be known at the time, so as I'm entering my product, my description, my um, job ticket routing code, my this one, the parent equipment would populate. Um, I, I may not know what my resource is going to be, who's going to do the work, but what I do have available, to, available um, is to identify the skill required. So this is a drop down listing the skill required to complete that task. And I'm going to get into skills a little more shortly. Close this out. And then beyond that, I would enter the time, the planned time for this task. I would enter my start date of when this needs to be done. And I would list all of my maintenance tasks in this section for the purposes of uh, identifying what needs to be done in the future. Okay, so now that we've covered equipment, next is resources. Resources are the who. As I stated before, or maybe I didn't, I intended to, huh? a resource is similar to your labor work center in a routing. Resources will identify who will do the work and the cost associated with that resource. A resource could be an individual or team. It could be a named individual such as Scott, Scott Whitney, or it could be um, a, an identifier as used here. Also, it could be an internal resource or it can be an external resource. You see over here where we've got a supplier identified. So you're able to identify who typically manages that. Think of a smaller production facility that may not have a licensed electrician on staff. The supplier here could indicate that this is you know, our, our, our um, industrial electrician. Um, so same, uh, same as the equipment. So when we compare this to work centers, right, we, we know that in manufacturing, a work center can be, either can be either a machine or labor, yet in preventive maintenance, we have two separate functions, one for the equipment and one for the resource to differentiate. So our data entered across the top is very similar um, to what we saw with the equipment. We also have the ability to define the resource as active. Um, reason being is that should we have a resource change, it become inactive, 
we don't want to delete that resource as we want, want and need to have the ability to track history from an old resource. So we have that flexibility in terms of, I can mark this resource um, as not active, I can set an inactive date, and then an inactive resource cannot be populated onto a job ticket. So this puts a block in place in terms of simplifying um, that functionality in terms of what, which resource. One uh, structure, just like in a work center, structure is an optional field and can be used to identify the availability of a resource. So think of maintenance team members that may only work weekends. We could define that with a structure or maintenance team members that only work on the midnight shift. So that provides flexibility in terms of visibility for the maintenance planner. Okay, so next, costing dimensions. This is a key point in that they work the same way as they do in work centers, but are, are more critical because this is the key costing element for uh, preventive maintenance. So here we would enter our labor rate and our standard run or our standard setup time. We populate any overhead, should that be applicable? And then a key element is in our WIP interface, we wanna populate our account code for, the, for labor to identify any specific, um, sorry, for the calculation of any variances to, that they get posted to the correct account. And of course, should dimensions be required, they're here as well. So skill set, I mentioned that uh, a little earlier when discussing scheduled tasks. Skills are used to identify which resource can be assigned to which maintenance task. There are several options available and these can be configured. This comes from a miscellaneous table. So as I showed before, we've got um, a whole list of predefined options, but with the fact that it's in a miscellaneous table, this can be edited to meet your customer's specific needs. And again, importance of attachments. Um, they're available within a resource function and this can be used to store information about the resources such as licenses, certificates, etc. Okay. So now that we've identified, we've discussed our equipment and our resources, let's take a look at um, our maintenance task. And again, you'll notice that this is very similar to a routing. Same information. Um, and I'm just gonna backpedal just for a second. I've done all of my navigations via my landing page. But you'll notice preventive maintenance has its own menus. We've got technical data listed. We've got our job ticket routing codes. So we've got specific routing codes defined for job tickets. Functionality is the same as routing codes, um, but they're specific for the job ticket route codes. As well, we've got job ticket bomb codes. And with our, our technical data, we've got our job entry transactions, um, job ticket tracking transactions. We just discussed our job ticket setup with our equipment and resources, and of course the equipment resourcing group, and all of these are separate functions. I said they're like work centers, but they're not intermixed with work centers. Okay, so back to the maintenance task, and you'll notice that it's extremely similar, as I said, to a routing. Key area here is that the equipment is always populated in the beginning. It's the equivalent of the machine work center whereby it's always populated on the, the maintenance task in the beginning. Then the resource is identified where it's known. It's not always going to be known, but when it is, it will be populated here. And then of course, same, we've got our plan time identified. Again, we've got you know, standard functionality, where we've got our routing operation details, where we can add text information in terms of instructions, 
uh, detailed information as it relates to the maintenance task. And then we've got our attachment functionality. Because what we need to keep in mind is that when we think of production, production something's done on a regular basis, but all maintenance tasks aren't. So we need that quick access, quick availability of the, such information. Okay. So now that we've got our setup information, our product category for a maintenance task, our product, we've created our components, we've created our maintenance tasks from our equipment and our resources. Now let's talk about our job tickets. And again, I'll be a bit repetitive, but our job ticket is much like our work order. Again, for simplicity. And so within the job ticket, as we're entering, we're able to select our reason code. There's a number of options available here, and this is there's the functionality here is related to reporting. This helps track, um, gives the customer the ability to report on the different reason codes for the job ticket. As well, we've got uh, a job request description. So if you consider a scenario where my role is a machine operator, I do not have the capability of entering a maintenance task, or sorry, a job ticket, but I can create a job ticket in a planned status by identifying my, the, the equipment I'm running has an issue that requires attention. Um, so I'm going to create a job ticket. It's going to be created in plan status. And I will use this job request description field as a bit of pre um, uh, short form entry as to what the issue may be. And I could add any additional information either via header text or, um, or details associated with my um, header product as well. So provides that flexibility to create, quote unquote, a job ticket request by using the planned job ticket functionality. And just like a work order, a planned job ticket will not allocate components, nor will it allow the printing of, um, of any sort of um, documents. Okay, so for my job ticket, basically I'm entering my, my maintenance task product. I'm entering any quantity um, that may be applicable. I've got my job ticket bomb code identified. Um, and, and you'll notice the functionality here is the same setup that you see within, um, within the work order. My components are listed. Draw to your attention the fact that I've got the ability to add unexpected material because unlike production, material may not always be known right off the bat. So important to um, point out to the customer that this can be done here. Likewise, a task can be added here, adding unexpected operations not expect, uh, sorry, additional operations not expected. Uh, there's standard reports of available from your job ticket. So we've got our um, maintenance material issue slip. Where in this case, it's listing our components. It will list any allocated quantities. It would list lot numbers and serial numbers as applicable to allow the picking of those components form being very similar, the report, I'm sorry, being very similar to our material issue slips. And as well, we've got our PM job ticket. Identifying our task to be performed. Um, uh, the work center's identified the resource that's been assigned, um, resource name, our start and end time, and then a separate sheet for the next task. Okay. Um, 
allocation rules, standard functionality. So in the case here, we see that detailed, you see that our detailed allocate, uh, our components are detail allocated, same view functionality, again, providing that simplicity. Once you train your customer on work order functionality, it's an easy transition to go to um, the job ticket functionality. So from here, job ticket tracking gives you the capability of tracking your job tickets. Um, one key piece added here is that, remember I mentioned earlier that um, when we're creating a work, a job ticket, I'm sorry, when we're creating a job ticket, that resource may not be known. And so that resource may not be assigned to some point in the future. We don't want to block the creation of the job ticket without a resource. However, that resource is a key element to our costing within preventive maintenance. So if I were doing prevent uh, my job ticket tracking and I did not have an actual resource populated, the transaction would be blocked. So it wouldn't allow me to complete the, the tracking of my tasks without um, a resource being added so we don't miss that labor cost. And then similarly, um, when we're doing tracking, so let's go. So I've got the ability to add a, additional operations not expected. Um, I've got the, so I've begun a task and found out that that task is far greater than what we originally planned. Again, correlate that to you taking your vehicle into the shop for maintenance for something real simple and find out that it's far greater. Um, we've got, got that same um, issue that may apply with respect to your job tickets so that you've got the ability to add those additional operations as well. You can add additional components within the job ticket at the time of tracking. One thing that I skipped over with respect to the job ticket is just like a work order, this can be a single product or multiple products. So provides that flexibility in processing. Um, as well, um, keep in mind what you're seeing here is the full screen all of the, the field options that are available, you still have the capability of hiding fields uh, for those that aren't applicable or necessary for your customer. Our job ticket close function works identical to the work order close function where we, we select a job ticket. We um, can tell from the beginning, our complete button in this case isn't grayed out. So we know that this is not completed. We're able to review or jump into the tracking detail to uh, verify the status of the various, whether the components or the task tracking within this job ticket to see what hasn't been completed. I am able to complete the job ticket before I go to the close step. Let's see. In all of my examples, here's one that the job ticket is actually has been completed. So I can simply click the close button in order to complete to close out this job ticket. And remember, just like a work order, once I close out that job ticket, that blocks any changes from being made to the job ticket itself. Then once I complete my job ticket function, I've got my cost finalization, which again is the job ticket whip posting, um, a matter of selecting all transactions, selecting my job tickets that I wish to close, wish to um, complete my postings for. We've, so there's your basic flow um, of the functionality within, um, the preventive maintenance. Now the option, of course, just like within work orders, um, with the job ticket close, 
by parameter definition, you can determine whether or not that job to get closed will cost the work order or not, either be a pop-up or not a pop-up. And should you go that route, should you have the job to get closed step not do the costing? We've got the um, whip finalization option available as well. So you can do the costing before you complete the whip posting. Job ticket inquiry screen works just like the list of work orders. And here's my list of work orders. I've got drill down capability to jump to a specific work order from here. See the statuses included in my options are firm and planned. I didn't select close at the top. So functionality is just like your list of um, work orders. And equipment history takes me back to my equipment. So I have that quick visibility of what um, of history that's been performed on this piece of equipment. And as stated, history populates once I close out the job ticket. Perfect, Scott, can you jump back to the PowerPoint? Sure, uh, just a couple of questions, Clark, for you. Are there any plans to make the job ticket function mobile uh, through mobile automation? Um, so the short answer to that is yes. Um, what's okay. required to get there is we're waiting for um, the new mobile automation functionality to allow for customization. Right, got it. And then following the same example of taking your car to the shop, is there an option to convert a job ticket to an invoice? There is not. It's in, the, the functionality is intended solely to be internal. It's not intended to uh, be used to bill a customer, for example. Got it. Okay, thank you. Great questions, right. thank you. Yep. <clears throat> uh, preventive maintenance, what's next? So release has been planned for, or sorry, we're expecting a March 2020 re release. Uh, preventive, there will be available uh, a pre preventive, I'm having a hard time with that preventive word, Scott. Preventive maintenance installation guide. We've created a user guide as well. Um, how to implement preventive maintenance. A series of training videos have been created. Uh, business procedures have been defined. Um, once we have all of those ready to roll out, we'll advise where you'll get that information. We've re received some feedback from the, our pre-sales team has shared this with uh, some of the partner pre-sales groups. We've received some feedback and phase two of preventive maintenance is in the planning stages before we've actually released. So we're really excited about um, the interest and the feedback we've received thus far with preventive maintenance. So stay tuned for more folks. We're really looking forward to sharing. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Clark. I covered a couple of questions that uh, that were in the chat. Another one came out was, um, as far as the resource availability, I know we had a, to market inactive or had a single date for inactivity of that resource, but is there anywhere that you could put in like a, a vacation or a holiday schedule for those specific resources? Um, good question. Bear with me one second. I know Probably. that I know that was thought of. That has not no, no. Um, but that's great feedback. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We can look at that. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. All right. So getting into what's new. Um, so what are, what are some of the new things coming up uh, uh, soon? The first one is um, X3 Start. So we've gotten through all of our um, training uh, videos and those will be uploaded to Sage U very soon. Uh, so you guys should be able to see those uh, starting to come. 
2023 R1. We're getting ready for that uh, for that next release uh, coming up in April. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I suspect in our next roundtable, we'll go over some of that what's new capability uh, in, in that next release. And then for our team, uh, we're starting to uh, build out some more of uh, those North American expert workshops. So things that may be tailored a little bit differently than our global center, center of excellence uh, workshops that we're going to be going over uh, going over next. Okay. So switching over to Sage University for you. So one of the things that um, we were talking about with our Sage University partners was looking really at your partner learning program to make sure it's just a reminder uh, that you do have uh, partner training that's included uh, in your feeds. So there's the core training, uh, additional learning, and advanced learning. One of the things that's not included are the expert workshops, but uh, for those that are in need, those are truly available, and we'll be going over those here shortly. Then also with your stream subscription, you have access to the stream methodology toolkit, uh, and, and that there's a lot of great collateral in there, a lot of great uh, project uh, methodology changes and things that that we've been looking at over the last uh, few months. Now, one thing that I um, that wanted to make sure that we covered is into your customer training. So you have the ability to see what your uh, customers can see as far as training goes, and that's from your, your partner portal. And then <clears throat> to have conversations with your customers because they may be looking for additional learning opportunities as well. So in their Sage Learning membership, they have the ability to have three different tiers uh, either basic plus or premier and those levels of membership are available provide an economical and convenient way for them to access learning at exactly the same time that they need so things that you may we wanted to push out for them areas of opportunity that you might see that uh, that they may benefit from on their non-project related uh, milestone timing uh, but that's all available that you guys can see and then can uh, push them in that direction inside those tiers uh, what are the benefits that they get right so you've got your basic plus or premier levels and uh, and each one of those has um, uh, some key functionality that they're available for so take a look at those things and uh, and communicate out to your uh, customer base things that are here in march and april so taking a look at the knowledge bites uh, we've got a good one coming up if you're not registered for it uh, you maybe need to register today for the new customer report packs and inquiries for SEI and North American reporting. I know there's a lot of good functionality that that uh, and some new reports that we've gone through uh, in the course of updating for X3 Start and some other tools that are available for you. And then uh, have a few more here in March and then a couple new ones in April, especially that MRP MPS and some of the even workflow notification. Um, those are some good sessions coming up. Expert workshops for financials. Remember the uh, expert classes are advanced user classes with prerequisites uh, for base X3 knowledge. These are geared more toward advanced processing functionality within X3. So you have a couple of good ones coming up here in April. There's nothing left in March, uh, but that um, Jason recommended us that uh, rec revenue recognition, uh, putting that to practice is a really good session to, uh, to join. Distribution and manufacturing uh, for uh, today. I know you'll need to register uh, register soon, if not by Monday morning, uh, to have that that class available for you and save you really good uh, opportunity to learn more about web scheduling, and then a few more for shop floor tracking, um, understanding and managing supply chain constraints. Um, looking forward to that one. I haven't gone through that one myself, uh, but uh, looking to register uh, to get more understanding from the central team of what they're seeing and hearing on a global scale. Technical development and workflow uh, workshops, it's jam packed uh, in March and April. A lot of great functionality here, a lot of good classes. Um, I think we've gone through most of these. Um, a couple to, to call out specifically uh, for some of the functional consultants. Um, GraphQL uh, would be good to have a better understanding of uh, common tools, data models, and then one of the ones that um, I'm looking forward to myself is understanding 4GL as an implementation consultant. So how do you have better conversations with your technical team? Um, how do you better understand clients' requirements and what X3 can do? So some really good stuff coming up here in March and April. Um, 
you guys will get a, I think a copy of the, the deck here, but a lot of good information uh, to be shared with you and, uh, and your partner team. And then lastly, um, have a Sage U Spring promotion. Um, you can see here that, that there's a lot of um, um, brands, Sage brands in here. X3 is not included in this promotion, but you as partners may have other business units uh, that could take uh, um, full um, leverage on, on the training that's available. This one here, if you use this code, you're looking to receive 50% discount on this training. Now, there are only 15 days left. So it does go through the end of this month, um, but if you have um, if you have other business partners, other um, our partner teams that that work within the Sage 50, 100, 300, HRM, SCRM, fixed assets, uh, time slips, and estimating, they are available, and these classes are available in there. So you can go to Community Help. So if you're on Sage City, go to Community Help, Sage Insights for North America. You'll find these links uh, available for you. Okay. Upcoming, uh, so what's next for us? Next round table uh, will be, again, we show up on uh, the third Friday of each month. The next consultant round table is gonna be Friday, April 21st uh, at, at East at uh, eight Pacific. I apologize for my little typo there. And then 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So look for your invitation from your channel communications, or you can sign up at the Sage Partner Hub. And as always, you can sign up for multiple sessions uh, inside, the, uh, inside the portal. That's it for us today. Uh, definitely wanted to thank you all uh, for coming. If you please feel free to send us emails, send us feedback. We are always looking for better ways to assist you out, uh, out in the field uh, and with your customers. So please let us know if there's any functionality you wanna review at next month's roundtable. if there's any suggestions you have for us. We are always, always looking for that feedback. Um, Clark, do you have anything else on your side? I'm looking back here at the uh, questions. Uh, one of the ones, Clark, if you're there, is who's going to maintain uh, preventive maintenance moving forward? And is it considered part of the core product? Will it be maintained by R&D or is just continue to live with COEX? So the plan is initially in the short term, it will rem remain with North American COEX. Uh, beyond that, it will be added as part of the core product. Wonderful. Great stuff. Anything to add, Clark, on your end? Uh, no, no. Um, and, and is that for the question, Scott? I was having a challenge re getting through them. Yeah, there were, there were only, we, we've covered a couple of them. And then uh, we had one that says, apologies, we talked about it, but if a uh, third party is coming to do the maintenance, would I be able to make this flow uh, through AP? So by having a supplier in place, right, that gives the capability of creating a PO and and having that indirect flow, it wouldn't be direct, there's nothing driving it specifically from the job ticket, but the time spent certainly can be matched. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, want to thank everybody for uh, coming in and we'll see you next time. Great, thank you very much, everyone.